weddings are one of the most important ceremonies in most traditions, yet not all may be as extravagant or last as long as a Hindu wedding. Consisting of many pre-wedding, wedding and post-wedding rituals, a Hindu wedding is a special experience all on its own, not just for the bride and groom, but also for the family, the extended family, and even sometimes the entire village. Pre-wedding ceremonies, the engagement ceremony known as Magni is to portray commitment and loyalty to getting married. In the Hindu culture, people get engaged usually because they're going abroad, either for education or career, for love, and sometimes it is a delightful family occasion. The wedding day is one of the most crucial factors in the whole wedding ceremony. Choosing the perfect wedding day requires a priest to consult the astrological calendar in order to set an auspicious date. Before the wedding starts, either the girl's house and the boy's house, both, both the houses will have many ceremonies to do before the, uh, the yeah. wedding rite starts, you know. Right. So they have uh, three days before uh, the uncle of the, the bride or the, and the groom, they, that both different houses, not in one house. Bride's house, groom's house. They'll have uh, something like uh, a ceremony, they'll call it in Tamil, Nalungu, you know. That means the uncle keeps, uncle will bring the tray, carry the tray with all sweets, flowers, sari, gold, all that for the girl. Same with the boy's house also, they will do that, you know. So they'll come and then they will have this Nalungu in the evening. Uh, say a day before the wedding morning they have a ritual bath morning we give the girl a ritual bath where all the ladies do it you know they have the ceremony to do they have all three types of uh, uh, all that they call it um, sandalwood and then they have uh, uh, they call it shiaka you know and that one, and then the oil, gingerly oil, you know. They have an oil bath actually. Right? The ladies will put for them, and then they'll pour the water for them to bathe them, you know. That is cleansing them before the wedding. Then after the evening, they have this nalunga, I said, you know. The uncle will bring flowers, everything like that, and then they'll have a ceremony for them. It's just like what we did in the morning. They'll only have sandalwood ceremony. They'll put the sandalwood for the girl everywhere, you know. And then they'll do the arti for her mm. and that is one ceremony they will have. Okay, on the wedding day they will come here, the bride will come separately and the bridegroom will come separately. Okay. Okay, they will come, they cannot see each other for the three days. Oh, right. They can contact but they cannot meet each other because it is not good, they say not good lah, to okay. face each other on the wedding day. And one more, the sari of the wedding day, the bridegroom and the bride also cannot see. Okay. okay they will close with a net, they will bring here. Okay, when the bridegroom will be separate and the bride will be in the separate room. Okay. okay, first the bride will come and sit and do the ceremony. Exactly what we did in the house, the ceremony will be the doing first in the temple. After that, they will bring the bride with the costumes like for the wedding, dhoti and everything, the talpa all. They will be bringing the bride to the room and the bridegroom will come out. Okay, wife groom and the bride groom come out, the same thing will be happen. Okay, same thing, they will do the ceremony everything. Then they will bring the bridegroom with the saris everything and they let the bridegroom go and change. Okay, then they change and the bride will come first and sit in here. Sitting here, they will do their ceremony where they have to wash their mom and papa's leg with the milk where they put the in the legs on the tray and the mother and the father must wash the leg. The boy will wash the mother and father's leg first. So then the uh, then the family will take all those things they are supposed to do and he will uh, give the banana with the leaf that I told you with the and they give to the uh, bride's mother and father and he will take back. Take back. The mother, father will take. No? After that, the bridegroom also will do the same. Both sides they done everything, the ceremony. Then the bride's mother, father and the bridegroom's mother, father will exchange their banana, each other. And then they will put portal for mother, this mother and the father, father, the other father. Okay. Okay, then they will change. They say, my son is yours, my your daughter is mine. Uh -huh. 
uh, she exchange okay and your daughter is mine my son is yours they will take they will say that before they finish the ceremony and then later the bride and bridegroom will sit on the mandapam where we say mandapam the place where they sit we call mandapam uh, where they sit on it and then they will sit until the ayer finish the ceremony in front there sitting and doing the business after end of the ceremony they will give the tali to the bride and the bride will tie to the bridegroom three times okay and uh, by uh, i mean bride sister will hold the lamp mm-hmm. facing the girl's tali side okay. the lamp must be facing the tali side before the bride tie on the bridegroom's neck uh, so make sure it is proper la so they will check all the mala everything should be at, not covered by the tali so they will pull the tali and they will tie two ties the bride will tie one more last uh, either the atta will tie la the last because sometimes bride not uh, quite uh, what nervous right so they won't tie three or so sometimes one two only but the last one uh, uh, brides or bridegrooms atta will tie uh, finish the ceremony then they finish it up with uh, three rounds they will circle the uh, circle the you know the place where the sami priest is now uh-huh. they go around the place three times and uh, the ayer will say you must be i'm not so sure with the words like the words but i know they must be listen to the husband listen to the mother in law and uh, not obey and uh, third one if i'm not wrong to be a good wife mother and uh, so so Okay, and the end ceremony. After that, they will bring the I don't know what to say that one in English. It's we call it walaka, where is stone, you know, there's a stone there, round one. You know, normally the Indian used to you know roll and then uh, do the chutney all last time. You know, people like to cook with that one. Okay, that thing will be the one where the girl must put the leg on it, and the second finger there. they will put the minji they say put the ring something like a ring we call it minji okay okay the minji they must put on the second finger where they uh, where the bride will put in the bridegroom's leg okay. both side both leg the bride will change each leg and then they the bride will do the washing the leg and then uh, put the kumkum and the sandam there then only he will put the uh, ring on the second finger Like the second finger, normally they say if long means it uh, won't listen to that, but short means you will listen to that. It's like that lah. It's a ceremony. It's like that lah. Old people say, uh, and then as it's finished, then only they will tie a patam. Patam is the last ending where the the people will come and give money and uh, tie the patam. Patam is uh, mama they will tie. Uh, and they change the mala lah. Mala. Atte mala, mama, and take the to the show the mala to God, and then they exchange the mala. Uh, they are mala to the boy and the bride, and the bridegroom will change the mala like that. That's all. It's finished. All right. Okay. Now the fun doesn't just stop there. After the main wedding event, the newly wedded couple will have to participate in a number of ceremonies we call the post-wedding ceremonies. Some of them include the vidai. the dua rokai and the mohri kai. Let's have a look at some of them. The vidai ceremony is also called the bride's departure. It is carried on the site of the wedding which is usually the bride's house. She would leave the house of her parents and take the road to her husband's home. The friends and family of the bride present at the wedding would shower her with blessings and gifts and bid her tearful farewells. Once they reach the groom's house, they participate in another fun ceremony called the dua rokai. in which the groom's sister would stop the couple by the entrance and bar them entry inside until given enough gifts from her brother. The bride would then enter the house after kicking a rice field pot. She will enter with her right foot as her first step is deemed auspicious. Once inside, she will be able to meet with the groom's family members in Mohdikai. Each family member will present a gift to her as a welcoming gesture to the family. The family members as well as the couple would then participate in a variety of fun field games as a nice breaking session. 
And that concludes the post-wedding ceremony. Hello, my name is Sai Naraman Shah. Today I'll be talking about the Indian food ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Sain Rahman Shah. Today I'll be talking about the Indian wedding food at a wedding. And as you can see here, this is a traditional rice. This is chicken tandoori. Um, this is a naan. This is dal. And this is um, spinach with um, nuts. I'll just try this uh, naan with a bit of dal. This is delicious. This is super delicious. This is um, the spinach that I was talking about with a bit of nuts. As you can see, it's very green. It's very good. This is the, uh, the famous chicken tandoori. It's very red, it's spicy. Let me just take a bite of it. It has a very stingy taste. It has a bit of sweet, a bit of spicy, and it's delicious. And for the final um, food, Indian food is the traditional rice. As you can see, it's very smushy. So it's orange. I think they put a bit of curry inside. So uh, it's very spicy. It's nice and it's delicious. Um, those are the traditional Indian wedding food. Hi everyone, my name is Coxin and I will now introduce you to the bridal attire and jewellery worn during the pre-wedding and during the wedding day itself. A few days before the wedding, the bride will normally wear something like this. This allows the bride to set the mood of the wedding day without wearing the formal dress. On the wedding day itself, the bride will normally wear a white blouse that is formal, pretty, and makes the bride stand out amongst the crowd. It is known normally as a langa. It is usually accompanied with jewelry and gold of all sorts. Moving on to the jewelry side of things, we have this big bracelet, also known as a kara. As you can see, it is glittery and very beautiful. This small bracelet on the other hand, is known as the churia. Both the kara and the churia are meant to be worn together by the bride on the wrist during the wedding day itself. The bracelets come in all sorts of different colors, sizes, and varieties so that the bride will have more options and combinations to choose from. Besides, we also have the necklace which is worn by the bride during the wedding day itself. Well, that's all for now. Bye! The groom's attire is traditionally made up of four separate yet absolute items of clothing. However, due to modernism triumphing over traditional practices in the current era, in terms of fashion, these items are usually swapped out and replaced with less conventional styles of apparel. The outfit usually exhibits vibrancy and decadence depicted through its outstanding choice of colours and patterns and commonly bears resemblance to the theme of the wedding and the respective bride's outfit. The first piece of attire, which is the Safa, also known as the wedding turban, is a piece of cloth wrapped around the groom's head. The next piece of attire is known as the Sara, which are chains of beads which forms into a curtain with the purpose of covering the groom's vision. The shawani, which is a traditional long sleeve dress like top that extends to the knees, is the main attire for the groom. 
Lastly, the shoes for the groom are known as the mojari or the kusan. These shoes are shaped like Aladdin type shoes, usually seen in Mongol art, which depicts the tradition and cultural implications of a Hindu wedding. As shown in this video, Hindu weddings are wonderful ceremonies filled with tradition that has been passed on from generation to generation. Despite India having modernized and getting increasingly advanced every year, the people are happy, more than happy, to mix the old with the new, showing that it is important to hold on to your traditions, heritage, and celebrate the richness of culture.